Welcome to Visual Basic and the Amusement Park Project. My name is Dan McElroy and I am thinking of building Dan World. I am going to make lots of money. People are going to come and they're going to pay for admission and parking. I'm going to build this big giant hotel where people can rent rooms and buy some food. Your job is to create a Visual Basic project using multiple forms to be used in ordering tickets and hotel reservations for a trip to the amusement park. When people press the Tickets button, a new form will open up and the number of days can be entered and the number of tickets. When the Hotel button is pressed, someone can enter the number of days, select the room, and decide whether they want an optional breakfast. We will need an interface module so that we can pass the data back and forth between these different forms. The price of admission into the park is set at $95 per person per day. A $15 service fee is added for ordering the tickets. An optional fee for parking is $20 per day. The ticket ordering form is to update the price each time any of the selections on the form are changed. The hotel form has two types of rooms available. Single room at $125 per day and a suite at $215 per day. The hotel also offers breakfast for an additional $10 per day regardless of how many people are in the room. The main form is to display the subtotal for the park admission and hotel charges each time one of the subforms is completed. The main form is also to compute tax at 8.75% and display the total charges. Clear buttons are to be placed on each form. The clear button on the main form is to clear the data from all the subforms. Here is a sample execution of the program. I'll start off and click the tickets which opens the tickets form. I want to stay for three days for two people and I'll pay for parking. That's $645. When I'm done with this form, I'll say done. Next thing, I want to select the hotel. I'll stay for two days. Even though I'm staying at the park for three days, I'm only going to stay at the hotel for two. I'll be cheap and select a single room, but I will pay for breakfast. That's $270. I'm done with this form. I'll say done. The main form shows a summary, $645 for tickets, $270 for the hotel, $80.06 for the tax for a grand total of $995.06. When I'm done with this, I can say clear, or I can even say exit and leave the program. Let's see how this is all computed. When I select the tickets form, I'm going to have two tickets at $95, that's 2 times 95, plus $20 for parking. Multiply all this by 3 because there's 3 days. Add the $15 service fee for $645. The $645 needs to be stored in the interface module, which then can be read by the main form once the tickets form has been closed. So, how does hotel work? For the hotel, I have a single room and breakfast that's $125 plus 10, so that's $135 multiplied by 2 because I'm staying for 2 days. The $270 is stored in the interface module, which can be read by the main program when it's time to update the summary of all the charges. This project starts out like any of the previous projects when creating the main form. Well, we'll create the form and name each of the objects. It may be easier to create the subforms before writing the event handlers for the objects on the main form and any other subroutines or functions that are needed. The interface module. In addition to the three forms, the project will use a visual basic module to communicate between the forms. The module for this project will contain the constants shared data and a shared function. The module is similar to global data, but it can contain constants that can be shared by multiple forms. A module also can contain functions and subroutines. As far as pictures, this project has a picture on the main form and a picture on the hotel charges form. The images are supplied on the class page. Copy these pictures to your computer and they'll be added to the forms. Start off by creating the main form and adding a label at the top of the form for the title and adding a picture box. You can name your amusement park anything you wish. 
select the image property, the picture box, and then click import button and select the image that you copied. Add buttons and the label for output. I'm using a multi-line label that has four lines that's going to be used to output the subtotals, tax, and total. If you wish, you can use a list box instead. Here are the object names that I'm using. LBL title for the title, BTN tickets, BTN hotel, BTN clear, BTN exit, pick, park, and LBL total. The pick park is for picture for the multi-line text box. Set the auto size property to false and set the border style property to fix 3D. Click the down arrow on the right side of the text property. This will display the box for entering multiple lines of text. Enter four lines. This will verify that you have enough room for the four lines of text for the subtotal, tax, and total. It does not matter at this time what you enter. These lines will be updated when the program runs. Use the Solution Explorer to rename the form. Solution Explorer will also update the name of the file for the form. Click the View menu and select the Solution Explorer to display it on the screen. Select the form. Rename the form to frmmain.vb. Now this is important. You may need to use the Solution Explorer later to select and display the other forms after you have created them. Add the Tickets form. The main menu project has an Add Windows form. So click the Add Windows form. I want to say Windows Forms. Go down to where it says Name and call this FRM Tickets. Now, I used a capital T for tickets to separate the FRM from the word Tickets. Set a label, a text box and a label for days, a text box and a label for number of tickets, a label to say $15 service fee, a checkbox. Now the text for the checkbox is already part of the checkbox. Two buttons for clear and done, and a label. I'll set the auto size equal false and the border style fixed 3D. Here are the names. LBL title for the title, TXT days and LBL days for days, TXT tickets and LBL tickets for tickets, LBL service fee, a checkbox for CHK parking, two buttons BTN clear, BTN done, and a label at the bottom for output LBL tickets subtotal. Now let's create the hotel form. Click the project menu item, select add windows form, name the form FRM hotel. So I want a label, a label in a text box for days, radio buttons for the room selection, a checkbox for breakfast, and buttons for clear and done, and a label set the auto size to false, border style equals fixed 3D. Name the objects on the hotel form. LBL title, TXT days and LBL days for the days, RAD single and RAD suite for the radio buttons, CHK breakfast for the checkbox to select a breakfast option. BTN clear and BTN done for the buttons and LBL hotel subtotal. Now I need to create the module. So I'll select a project menu item, select add module, name the module mod park. Enter the code shown below. Here I have constants for ticket price, the hotel single rate and the hotel suite rate, the breakfast rate, the service fee, and the parking charge, and the tax rate. All of those are constants and they're all labeled as public so that they can be accessed by all of the forms. I also have two variables in here. I have a variable for ticket subtotal and hotel subtotal. These are the locations that the other forms will store the results so that they can be read by the main form. I realize it might be easier not to put a function inside the module, but I want a function in the module just to show that it can be done. Here's a function for compute tax. It's going to receive the subtotal and multiply it by the tax rate and return the subtotal. For the main form, there's a subroutine for display total. We also have event handlers for form load, button tickets, button hotel, button clear, and button exit. 
The form load event handler executes when the form is first loaded. The form load event handler is going to display the total. It should be all zeros. The button tickets event handler should bring up the tickets form. The tickets form is going to figure out how many days and the number of tickets sold and whether or not we want to pay for the parking, etc. Come up with the answer and store the answer in the module. When this form closes, we'll go back to the main form, which will update the subtotals, tax, and total. When the hotel button is clicked, it's going to activate the button hotel event handler, which then loads the hotel form. People can enter the number of days and whether or not they want breakfast. The price for the hotel is going to be computed, and that is going to be stored as a subtotal in the module. When this form closes, we'll return back to the main form. The display total subroutine can then update the text on the main form. Button clear clears all the totals and then calls the display total subroutine again to update everything on the main form. Well, button exit, that's the easy one. It closes the program. Here is the code for the main form. The text for the code is rather small and hard to read, so in the next few slides I'll blow up each section for the text. The main form includes a section for the private data, for the load event handler, for the tickets e click event handler, for the hotel click event handler, for the clear button click event handler, for the exit button event handler, and for a subroutine for displaying the total. Use the Solution Explorer to select the main form. Double click an unused area on the form to bring up the form main load event handler. Enter the following lines after the line that has public clash form main and and before the line that has private sub form main underscore load. Private tax as decimal equals zero and private total as decimal equals zero. The decimal data type is very similar to the double data type. Both of them can hold numbers past the decimal point. The processing is a little bit different though. Enter the code for the main form. For the main form load event handler, just say display total. That will update that label on the form to display a bunch of zeros. Next, we need to enter the code for the buttons. We'll start off with the tickets button. On the main form, double click the tickets button and enter the following code. Dim ticket form as new FRM tickets. If you look at the top of the code for the main form, it starts off as public class FRM main. The code for the tickets form will start off as public class FRM tickets. This is sort of like a data type, but it's really a class definition. You may think about creating an integer. It might start off as dim count as integer. Here we're going to say dim ticket form, so this is going to be our object, as new, because I want a new object, I'll say as new FRM tickets. FRM tickets is the class name. Now I have an object by the name ticket form. We could either say ticket form dot show or ticket form dot show dialog. The difference is that if I say ticket form dot show, both the main form and the ticket form are active. If I say ticket form dot show dialog, then both will be visible on the screen, but only the ticket form will be active. The ticket form must close before control returns to the main form. While we're still on the main form, after the ticket form closes, I can say display total, and this will update the screen. Do something similar for the hotel button. Go back and display the main form, double click the hotel button, and enter the code dim hotel form as new FRM hotel. Then say hotel form dot show dialog and display total. Go back and display the main form and double click the clear button. I can say ticket subtotal equals zero, hotel subtotal equals zero, display total. I also want to call the clear subroutines for form tickets and for form hotel. I can say the name of the form dot clear 
for each of those. The exit button is the easiest one. All we have to do is say me.close. Enter the code for the display total subroutine. And here it is. I want to compute the tax. So tax equals compute tax. Where was compute tax defined? That was defined in the module. So compute tax is input the ticket subtotal and the hotel subtotal called the compute tax and that's going to return the tax. The total is going to be the ticket subtotal plus the hotel subtotal plus the tax. Then set LBL total dot text. I wanted to say ticket subtotal dot two string open parentheses quote capital C quote close parentheses. The C means currency. In the past sometimes I've used format currency but this time I'm using two string to do the same thing. Ampersand quote space tickets quote that's going to give a space before the word tickets. The ampersand says add some more stuff. VBCRLF is going to move us down to the next line. Then I keep doing the same thing for hotel subtotal. Do the same thing for tax. Put it to string. And then the total. And here's my in subroutine. That will display four lines of text inside the LBL total dot text that will display four lines of text inside the label for total. Now let's look at the tickets form. It has four event handlers. The form load will compute price which is zero and then display it. We want to figure out if there's any changes to the text box for days, for the text box for tickets, and for the check box for parking. If there are any changes to any of these I'll go back, look at everything, recompute the price, and display it. The button clear will clear everything out. The button done will recompute everything again, store it in ticket subtotal, which is in the common module, and return back to the main program. Here is the code for the tickets form. It has two private pieces of data. Days is integer and tickets is integer. The load event handler just calls compute price. The clear clears everything and done computes price and closes which is going to return us back to the main form and here it's changed. Let's look at that in more detail too. Here is part two because I didn't have enough room on one slide. Part two has compute price and this is all inside of a try catch block. So inside the try it says ticket subtotal equals zero and then we'll get the number of days from the text box and we'll get the number of tickets from its text box and we'll verify that the days is going to go from 0 to 20. We'll compute the price of the tickets which is going to be tickets times the ticket price which is $95 and add the service fee. If parking is checked then we'll add the parking charge, store the answer inside the, inside the label at the bottom and let's look closely at the code for the changed event handler. What I can do is start off and double click the text box that's going to create an event handler for text changed. At the end right here where it says handles text days dot changed I can say comma text tickets dot changed comma check parking dot checked changed. Now anytime any one of these three objects has a change to it, it's going to activate this event handler. It really doesn't matter what the name of the event handler is. What's really important is what is being handled. The code for the hotel form is pretty similar. On form load we clear everything. Again, very similar. If there are any changes to the days or the room selection or the breakfast selection, we'll go and recompute the price for everything and display it down in the bottom. Button clear clears everything. Button done recomputes everything, displays it, and returns back to the main program. It starts off as public class form hotel. Here's our private data, days. The event handler for form load calls the clear subroutine. Here's the event handler for the clear button. The clear subroutine sets the hotel subtotal to zero. The text days text property, an empty string. 
the radio button for single checked to true, the check box for breakfast checked to false, and the subtotal text to zero dollars. The done button click event handler calls compute price and then closes this form and returns back to the main form. I want to look closely at the text days underscore text changed. It says handles txt days dot text changed. When we double click the text box for days, it will bring up a private subroutine for txt days underscore text changed. And I'll say open parentheses and at the end of the parentheses it says handles txt days dot text changed. I can also have the same subroutine handle more than one event by putting at the end I'll put a comma rad single dot checked changed comma rad suite dot checked changed comma chk breakfast dot checked changed so now the one event handler can handle a change to the text inside the days it will handle a single room selection changed it'll handle a change to the suite it'll handle any type of change to the checkbox for breakfast all we need to do for the code inside here is say compute price. For the compute price subroutine, start off and set up a try catch block. Inside the try catch block, inside the try, we'll do all of our work. If the days text box is, has an empty string, then we'll set days to zero. Otherwise, we'll convert the text into a double and store it in days. Then we need to check the, to see if the days is from zero to twenty. If it's outside this range, display message box. Otherwise, we can compute the price of the room. If single is checked, hotel subtotal is going to be equal to days times the single rate. If the suite is checked, then we, the hotel subtotal will be equal to the days times the suite rate. Add on the breakfast charge. If check breakfast is checked, so CHK breakfast is the name of our checkbox, dot checked. Checked is the name of the property that's going to be true if that checkbox is checked. So we can say if check breakfast dot checked, then hotel subtotal plus equal, that means add on the number of days times the breakfast rate. And then display the result. If there's an invalid cast, we have to then we can say days must be a numeric value. The images came from Wikimedia Commons. I got the roller coaster Dragon Con, and that's from Barcelona, Spain. And I got the picture of the hotel, and this is Hilton San Diego. I hope you enjoy this lap as much as I do. The hardest part of this program is going to make sure you don't make any typing errors. But this is really going to be pretty cool when you're done. Good luck, and have fun.